I'm from the Institute of Development Studies, which is here on campus. I have a lot of very good colleagues at the Institute. You've just heard one. You might well, in a party in Brighton, come across others. And it's quite possible that you'd meet one, and you'd start chatting, and you'd say to them, what do you do? And they would say, I'm a specialist on the impact of global warming on poor people in Brazil. And you would say, well, that's really interesting. Tell me about it. And then again, you might meet another colleague and uh, start chatting. And that colleague would say, I'm from the Institute of Development Studies. And I work on the whole problem of getting girls into primary education in North Africa. And you'd probably say, well, that's really interesting. Uh, tell me about it. And then you might meet me. And uh, I'd say, I'm from the Institute of Development Studies, and I work on taxation. <laughs> and there would be this moment of silence, because you wouldn't know how to respond. And you probably wouldn't know how to respond for at least two reasons. You know, one is tax, taxation, these are just not terribly appealing words, are they? You know, if you were to ask to do a, a word association, you know, is tax and taxation, are these sort of warm, friendly, hearty words? Or are they sort of cold, hostile, alienating words? You know, I think the answer is obvious. If you were asked tax and taxation, you know, does this sound like fun, exciting, interesting? Or does this sound tedious and boring? Yeah, well, it's tedious and sound very tedious and boring. So it's not a word you immediately warm to and respond to. And even more, you would say... Africa. But, you know, we know Africa is the poorest continent in the world with an awful lot of poor people in it. Um, if we're going to be interested in Africa, surely we should be talking about assistance and aid and you know, doing something for them. Why are you talking about taxation in Africa and taxing poor people? So the, the task in front of me is to try to shift your opinion a little bit and make you think that, in the first place, tax might be consequentially very important for Africa, and secondly, and rather more challenging, think, make you think that tax collecting might actually be fun. <laughs> and just to illustrate that I'm very serious about this business, uh, this is a pen that I carry around regularly. Here it is, and it does indeed genuinely say on it, make more tax Africa. <laughs> the issue about taxation is an issue about how we are governed. Now, I'm a political scientist by trade. Uh, I came into taxation quite late in my life. One thing political science, is, science has learned over many centuries is that governments are really ambiguous creatures. You know, on the one hand, they're essential and they do a lot of good things and we couldn't have civilization without them. But, boy, do we have to be really suspicious. Because governments have this enormous potential to rule in their own interests, to be taken over by quite a small group of people who then rule on their behalf and they oppress and exploit the rest of us. And we have a lot of that in Africa. So governments, if they're to do the right thing, they need to be watched closely, they need to be monitored, they need to be held accountable, and they need to be motivated the right way. And motivation, this is where, where the tax comes in. Governments are actually quite big money machines. They raise a lot of money from us, and they spend a lot of money from us. And where they get their money from and how they get their money is actually very important in shaping the character of governments and how they behave. And in fact, in that sense, governments are not that different from individuals. And if you think around the people you know in life, you think of where they get their basic livelihood, and even more, how that changes, how they change as that changes over time. People who have to work tend to have a, a different attitude to the world and relationship to the world to people who don't have to work, for example. And if you don't work, it's a, it makes a big difference whether you're actually basically living off of your parents' money or nice inherited wealth or social security or something else. And if you're working, your attitude to the world and your relations to other people are probably going to be very significantly shaped 
by whether you basically have a career as a shop assistant, whether you're you know, struggling to build up a new business, as Peter, who's going to be talking later, is, or whether you're an incredibly successful international lawyer uh, working for some very large transnational corporations. So your livelihood really helps to shape behavior and personality. And that is actually true of governments. The important issue about governments and taxation is that Africa is different on average from the rest of the world. Most governments in the world get most of their money from what I'm going to call broad general taxation. And this really means that they get a lot of money, and they do get a lot, from a very large number of individuals and a very large number of companies, but in quite small chunks overall. African governments, on average, are different. They get some of that money, but in addition, they get money from two other major sources. And the two other major sources are, in the first place, development aid that comes from countries like this, governments like this. And secondly, from the profits they get from the control of the extraction of natural resources like oil, gas, and a large number of minerals, which is a quite fast-growing activity throughout much of Africa. So we have African governments are dependent actually on those three sources of income, broad general taxation, aid, and natural resource revenues, oil and gas. But those last two revenues, aid and oil and gas, are actually problematic because governments that are heavily dependent on aid <coughs> tend to behave in certain quite good ways. And in the first place, they have a very important incentive because if the government depends on general taxation for its income, it has a common interest with its own taxpayers, its own citizens, in their prosperity. And therefore, it has a real motivation to try and promote that prosperity and promote economic growth. In the second place, and related, if a government is uh, dependent on taxation from its citizens, it needs to have a certain approach to its citizens. If you want to raise taxes from people, you want to avoid having to send the army out every month to you know, extract these by force. You actually want to try and, you know, if you like, seduce your citizens into paying taxes grudgingly, but sort of voluntarily, never fully voluntarily. And so governments that depend on taxes have to try and do something to persuade their citizens to pay taxes. And what they tend to do in the long run is do things like give them something in return. And most of the time, that something they give in return is actually quite good things, like better education systems and better roads and ports and health services, etc. So not only do governments want to promote the prosperity of their citizens, but they tend to want to give something back to their citizens. And there's also a relationship on the other side, because if people pay significant amounts of their money in tax, they're much more likely to say, hey, these guys are taking our money. What are they doing with it? And therefore get organized and mobilized to find out what's happening to their money and try and check what's happening and control what's happening to their money. In other words, taxation is really very supportive of basic democratic principles. It's, the, if you like, the material support to democracy. So dependence on taxation is a good thing. And there are plenty of examples in Africa of the opposite. And the most dramatic example is actually Nigeria, one of the biggest, the biggest country in Africa. That it's a big, it's a complex country, but it wasn't that badly governed in the past. But in the early 1970s, Nigeria started to discover and extract large amounts of oil and uh, very quickly almost gave up taxing its citizens. And Nigeria became very quickly, and largely remains, with some exceptions, the byword for bad governments and corruption and everything else. So this is all a problem. I'm going to interrupt myself here, because some of you know a bit about Africa, and you probably know, actually I hope you know, I hope you feel, that we've had a long history in Africa of white people, like me, often from the distance, standing up and preaching and advising what's good for Africa. So it sounds as if I'm doing this. And in fact, if I thought I were just doing that, I wouldn't be terribly comfortable here. But I'm actually very comfortable 
with saying these things because I'm not the only person who, say, who says these, and there are a lot of people in Africa who say that. Here's one person who says it. I'll introduce you in a minute, but in the meantime, I'll say a couple more things, and I want you to imagine that she is talking, not me. Uh, a couple of things that she would say is that there might be two policy messages from all this. The first is that if we want better governments, then generally speaking, we need more funding of them from tax and less funding from aid. The second policy message, slightly more complicated, refers to those governments that get a lot of their income from oil and gas and minerals. The message is it's not a good idea that government gets all that money terribly easily and has discretion on how to spend it. It would be better if government were actually to transfer most or all of that money automatically, monthly, by check, or the electronic equivalent to all its citizens. And then if it wanted some of that money back to do the things that governments do, tax it back, ask the citizens to pay. So that's two like policy conclusions. There is also an implication here about the, the nature of the tax collection business, and this is what I want to come on to now. This is a quotation. We should elevate ourselves from being just tax collectors and tax commissioners to being state builders. That's a quotation from someone called Alan Kagina. And you met Alan just now. Alan is, um, she's a friend, uh, she's also the head of the Revenue Authority in Uganda, and Alan is actually a very suitable person to really to say the things that I'm saying here. And I'll tell you why she's particularly suitable, apart from her professional qualifications. Now, Alan is an incredibly charming person. That might sound like a little patronizing, but it's actually quite important in this context. Because modern taxation, in a sense, requires organizational charm on the part of tax agencies. You don't tax well and effectively by trying to squeeze money out of people, extract it by force. What you want to do is gently, gently ease the money out of people. And there are a lot of techniques of doing that that are becoming increasingly important in taxation. You need to explain to people how to pay their taxes and why they should be paying taxes. You need to go and talk to people and find out how it is that you can make it easy for them to pay taxes. In a country like Uganda, you need to design some very simple basic taxes that can be applied to very small enterprises so they can pay their taxes without going through all the normal complicated rigmarole of tax paying. And you need also to regularly communicate with your taxpayers, find out what's working, do statistical analysis, and uh, adjust your approach. So modern taxation, it's, it's an activity that involves a lot of marketing, involves a lot of communication, involves a lot of psychology. And as it happens, or not entirely as it happens, not by coincidence, Alan is actually a graduate not in ec economics or accounting or law or any of those things that are associated with taxation, but she is a specialist in uh, psychology, she's a graduate in psychology. So, I hope I have given you some reason to think that uh, taxation is really important in Africa. At least a little reason to think that taxation is not quite as boring as you thought it was before. But is it really fun? Well, all I can do on that is um, show you a picture of a party I attended recently. Uh, this is a tax collector's party. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, actually, sorry, it's not that picture. Um, it's this picture. Uh, this is the 50th... Um, <laughs> this is the 50th birthday party of the uh, Joint Tax Board of Nigeria. And uh, here we are, a lot of very jolly tax collectors and one or two other odd people cutting their birthday cake. You know, I mean, isn't this fun? Um, taxation is really fun. So the takeaway message I want to give to you, and especially people who live in Brighton, is would you please spread the message to your friends that if at a party in Brighton they happen to meet a guy who says, um, I'm from the Institute of Development Studies, 
and I work on taxation, what they please immediately say, well, isn't that interesting? Tell me more. <laughs>